And this place is a hidden gem. Our airboat rides are the coolest airboat rides. Hopefully everybody comes out in one piece. I feel amazing. I've had a gator before. Does anybody know any differences between the alligator and the crocodile? Here at first because I thought I was going to get mauled by an alligator. Boat ride, it was super fun. The 360s walking around, that we got to see gators, it was super fun. We got a little wet, which was totally fine, splashes. But what was great was him walk doing the 360s, that was incredible. It was my first time on an airboat, but it was great, definitely made me want to go again. Nice to meet you. I'm, I'm Matt, Mark. Yeah. Pleasure. You're the oldest alligator farm in South Florida, right? That, that's absolutely correct. Um, I'm one of the owners here at the Everglades Alligator Farm. We've been around since 1981. We're home to about 2,000 alligators, and we are one of the limited 30 active alligator farms in the uh, state of Florida. Oh, one of 30? I didn't know that there was a limited number. That's right, there's a cap. Mm -hmm. So what makes you guys special is that you were telling me earlier that you're outside of the buffer zone, because most people go to the Everglades and it's on 8th Street and Big Cypress, sure. you know, off of there, and then it's very limited because it's part of the national park. So. So absolutely, we're right next to the entrance of Everglades National Park. The Anhinga Trail is, is about five miles from our site. This is privately held wetlands. We have about 250 acres of wetland. 500 alligators in here uh, that are from about six feet to 14 feet. And we feed them several times a day. Do you recommend these guys as a pet? Uh, not the best pets, guys. <laughs> we don't want them ending up in your neighbor's swimming pool or eat, mm. eating your puppy dogs. And you guys uh, do any wrestling or? Sure, yeah, in a few minutes you'll see one of our alligator handlers. We actually do a lot of nuisance alligator trap trap training uh, for FWC officers in the area. Um, we try to emulate some of the techniques of the, the Native Americans so that you can see how, how they were capturing alligators in the past. Oh, wow, that, that, that's awesome, that's awesome. It's alligators, crocodiles. We have some crocodiles on display. We like to display our reptiles of the Everglades and some, some other reptiles that are snakes or so, so some sort of crocodilian family. Um, we just love we just love reptiles, so it's, it's what we like to do. You guys have a, a python problem here? You know, every time I say that we don't, I'll see one the next week. So the three invasive species I say we see here the most is that Burmese python. Um, they're hard to find because they hang out very still and they only come out when they're ready to eat. The other, the other two problems are the green iguana, which I'm sure you've seen all over Miami by now. All over, yeah. And then we have something that's unique to this area is the Argentine and tegu. Tegu. That's right, have you seen one of the tegu? I've seen them, yeah, no, and people eat them. I bet you'll find some around the property if you take a look real hard. Oh yeah, the tegus are here, they're, they're, they're big, they're, they're, they're pretty docile. I hear they have a lot of, they use them as pets as well. They're, they're constantly in the pet trade, but be very careful, a monitor's bite it's full of bacteria. Um, you don't want to get bit by one of those. It's a life-changing bite. Really? Yeah, sure. Um, but they're they're kind of the garbage trucks of the Everglades. They'll eat all the eggs from the turtles, the birds, and the alligators. So, yeah, this area it's a constant threat. Sure. Nice to meet you, buddy. Thank you, man. We're going to be going to the alligator feeding at 2.30. So that so we definitely noticed that the gators know this guy feeds them because as soon as he came. All right, everybody, it is that time. How's everybody doing today? Once a month, we dump in over a thousand pounds of meat. We use beef, chicken, pork, fish, farm-raised rats, and a thousand pounds of meat once a month. That is more than enough to feed all of the alligators in this month. It is also illegal to feed wild alligators and when reported, Florida Fish and Wildlife Authorities, they will remove those alligators from their habitat and even kill those alligators. For your safety and the safety of the wild alligators here in Florida, never feed a wild alligator. Being cold-blooded animals, they rely on the sun and the heat from the sun for their bodies to function and digest their food. So the more sun they get, the more energy the alligator is going to have. Without proper sunlight and heat, the alligator cannot survive. My favorite part of the show now 
if there's anyone here that has any friends or family members that they do not like, I can help you get rid of them now. Okay. I want to thank you all for coming out. That does include my alligator feeding demonstration. That was the alligator feeding. That was pretty cool. It was nice. I mean, I like the fact that they don't harvest any of these alligators for food or for their leather. That's always nice that they're going to live out here the rest of their lives relaxed. Next, we have the alligator show. It's right around the corner from the feeding. This looks like where we're going to have the show. Pretty nice. We have it sheltered. I'm really impressed. This place is awesome. It has everything that I would want it to see from uh, the Everglades. Airboat rides, feeding. We're gonna see a little little show, maybe do some tricks. This place is awesome. I'm just, I'm disappointed with myself that I hadn't been here earlier. What happens? Hopefully, no accidents. Hopefully, everybody comes out <laughs> in one piece. Do you know any differences between the alligator and the crocodile? Salt water. Salt water. Salt water, fresh water, that is one. You are right. The nose it. The nose, you're right. right. And the first technique I'm going to show you today, this technique is called the quick capture. And once on the back of the alligator, one stunt that made these shows very famous. And the bulldogging technique was used to tie the jaws of the alligator. Sometimes the natives, they would have to go out on alligators alone, and they needed a way to tie the jaws for just one person. That is how they would do it. All right, my favorite part of the show coming up. That is getting off the alligator. <laughs> I want to remind everybody, alligators are not your friends. They're not your buddies, and they make horrible pets. Two hands at all times. One hand under the front leg, one under the tail. The tail is very strong, so make sure you're holding the tail at all times. Are you good? Go this way. Yeah, I'm good. <laughs> Try doing a mix grip with the egg. Strong little guy. I feel amazing. Strong. I've never had a gator before. They're strong. Look at their bodies. Uh, there was a guy. There was a guy holding an alligator, and uh, he was scared that if he dropped it on the concrete, it would hurt the alligator, which would, would have been the best uh, thing for him to do. So he saw the sand in there. He's like, "All right, let me drop it in the sand," because um, he was scared to hold the alligator. He was like fumbling around. He didn't want to drop it, so he dropped it in the sand. And that big guy was right there, ran after, it, chased the little one, ate it in front of everybody. Oh wow, that would have been the show. <laughs> How long have you been doing this for, man? Uh, close to five years now. Five years? Five years, yep. Awesome, man. Well, yeah. How did you get into this? I came here just like you guys as guests, and I fell in love with this place and been here ever since. Uh, so the guy that was doing the shows at the time, uh, his name was Chandler. Uh, I kind of picked his brain a little bit, and we became friends. And, uh, you know, once he ended up leaving, he put in a good word for me, and then I, I ended up applying and got the job. Yeah. So it was just all by chance and coincidence. Um, the thing with these kind of jobs is animals, these animals have a bad reputation. So a lot of people don't want to work with alligators because they're scared. So you have to be brave enough is like the first step to, to you know, want to get into this line, line of work. And they're strong. So yeah, they little, little pop yeah, even, yeah, even at this size, there are very strong animals. And also, that's why I always tell everybody, grip them nice and tight. They're not like little puppies or kittens. <laughs> um, they're very strong, at, even at this size, yeah. How did you manage to sort of have that... Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I work with her. I work with her every single day. She doesn't like it. She does not like it, but she uh, is used to it. So I work with her every day. She's not as afraid, and um, she understands I'm not trying to kill her or hurt her. So she she'll let me work with her. What about her yeah. mouth? Like it's not like closed or anything. So how are you? Um, you? So you have to train to work with these animals, and you have to know how to handle an alligator and. Uh, I kind of know how these ones react to certain things 
And then usually as, as long as you uh, keep you know, your hands or legs or anything away from that mouth when it's open, you'll be all right. <laughs> no, she's not trained. She's more like conditioned. How old are these guys? Uh, between two and three years. Oh, okay. Yeah. And how many are in that pond? In that pond, close to 250 alligators. On the entire farm, we have around 2,000 alligators total. How long does it take for an alligator to fully mature? To fully mature, it all depends on the size. So usually around six or seven feet, they're mature enough to reproduce. And uh, that takes around nine or ten years, depending on how much they're eating as well. And are these Female or is that Majority a female, yes. And even these ones? Yes, female because uh, we try to mainly keep females on the farm because uh, male alligators tend to get more aggressive when as they get older. Um, during the, especially during the breeding season, they will fight, you know, for females. Uh, so that's why in that big pond we mainly have females. We have we have a good amount of males. We have males, but mainly females, and we can control the the sex of the eggs by the temperature they're incubated at. So the temperature the eggs are incubated, that's how you're going to determine the sex. Uh, we'll go in there and collect them. We, we place haystacks all along the outside of the pond and that will um, uh, that will let the, the females know or when, when they can come start coming out and lay their, laying their eggs. So they'll turn those haystacks in the nest, they'll lay their eggs in there, we'll go in there and collect the eggs. So alligators and crocodiles at night. Closing, keeping the jaws closed, um, you know, that's why the, the, the electrical tape is able to do it because they barely have any power to open their jaws. All the power is closing. When I first started working with her, you know, she's turning around trying to bite me every chance she gets. But you have to, you know, keep, just tire them out, make her keep turning, tap her on the back and she'll turn around and try to bite you. And then, um, you know, you get out of the way and then um, she'll just keep doing that until she tires out. And once she sits still, then you got to go right away on the quick capture, you gotta use it right away. You can't hesitate. You hesitate, you, that's how you lose an arm or a leg, yeah. <laughs> and you went to a class training or? Uh, like? I learned everything here. So my my boss, Jeremy, he learned his, he learned his um, how to handle an alligator with over with the Mikasukis and off of Aishri. So he actually learned from them. Then he brought it here and then he's the one that trained me on how to handle an alligator. Awesome. Yeah. And anything you wanna say, anything? No, nothing, man. Uh, just anybody, if you're in, in South Florida and you're looking for a great place to visit, um, this place is uh, like a hidden gem. You know, a lot of people don't know about it, but this is actually a really cool place. And uh, yes, we are called an alligator farm, but we do not harvest or kill any of our alligators um, just for education and research purposes only. And if you want to learn about alligators, this would be a really good place to uh, stop by and check, check out some alligators. Oh, look at the crow, he wants to get in the shop. Yeah, so this was the the largest alligator they had here at the farm, 14 feet long. The world record for the largest alligator in Louisiana, I think he was saying was 19.2 feet. So, I mean, 14 foot, look at this guy. This guy's giant. Holy moly. Oh, look, bunch of emus. Look at that. Super rare. They're like one in a million. This is awesome. Yeah, so they call these big black birds buzzers, uh, turkey vultures. You usually don't ever see them this close up. You usually see them high circling dead animals up in the sky. But uh, yeah, they're pretty common, but never, like I said, never will you see them this close. So this is a tortoise, old tortoise. These guys live to be hundreds of years, a couple hundred years old, 120. And this guy's friendly, look at that. What's up, buddy? He's like, oh no, you don't have any food. <laughs> it's an African spurred tortoise. We got a terrarium here.
monitors. Hmm. Was that an anaconda? There's a snake with that same color pattern, but it's different. I think the red and the yellow touch, and that is poisonous. But the red and the black touching is non-poisonous. It's awesome, man. The gator wrestling. This was everything I could have asked for for an alligator experience. Definitely uh, great. Everyone's super friendly, super knowledgeable. Really nice. Where's this guy at? They got a bobcat in here? Is he shy? Oh, there he is. He's chilling. What's your name? Oh, you don't know? Oh, you don't know. <laughs> Just finished the gator show, which was awesome. We walked through the terrarium. Now, let's see what, what uh, they have to eat. I think they have gator. Let's check it out. Let's see what she recommends. Do they have gator bites? No gator meat. Sold out. The gator meat must have been so delicious. Sold out. We'll have to try that next time. So this was definitely one of the funnest experiences I've had here in Homestead in South Florida for that matter at the Everglades uh, Alligator Farm. Everyone was super friendly. The airboat ride was, was awesome. People were getting wet left and right, laughing. It was a lot of fun. The alligator feeding was pretty cool, pretty informative, and the alligator wrestling was awesome. And then at the end we got to handle alligators which was great. Definitely recommend this spot to anybody, locals or foreigners or visitors coming from anywhere. It was awesome. 10 out of 10. The gators were cool, especially all the crocodiles, the different species. The boat ride was really fun and holding an alligator was like a nice experience, I would say. Like as my brother said, it was like a really, really nice experience. A lot of like the guides were really like nice and like welcoming and pretty funny too. Um, I was kind of scared at first because I thought I was going to get mauled by an alligator. But everything is fine and it was a pretty fun experience. I got a hold of an alligator, which I never thought I would do. Because, but it was, yeah, they're kind of slimy, but they're nice. Yeah. So you definitely recommend for, definitely. for a friend? Yeah, it's a really, really nice place.